I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't go that route. I tell brothers, they be asking, people be asking me about this side. I said, look, stick with nationality. You know what I'm saying? Noble Drew Ali was really about forming us. We was an ancient nation that had been broken apart. We looking to reform back together into that into that nation, right? So stick with nationality, because you, you got to be a nation before you can get before you can be sovereign. You know, you got guys well, running around well, talking about well, their sovereign. Well, the, in reference to law, and way, the way it's worded in law, you are already sovereign. You so you can be a sovereign. You say, are you saying you can be a sovereign individual? You are already sovereign. That's the law. You are already sovereign. That's called the private side of the law. And I remember I said public and private. Okay, yeah. There's a private side. There's a public side. The private side protects your rights, so that makes you already sovereign. You just have to know the law well enough to be able to implement it in your behalf. So the private side, the, 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 the private side, you're talking about individual rights, the, the rights of a man. Yes, yes. Okay, now the public side, you're talking about the, right, uh, the rights taxes, of the Taxes, taxes, uh, the rights of a community, what a community. Judge, government, you know, anything outside the, the private and public. And that's where that's where your tax exempt number has to pay whatever bills and stuff like that on the public side. You can't take your tax exempt ID and go buy a car with it or a boat or nothing mm-hmm. like that. Because that's private. You have to you have to you have to discharge the debt on the public side of the law. Are you tax exempt? Public. Are you tax exempt? Are you a tax exempt individual? No, because I gotta. I have to know how to write the uh, affidavit and put the law in order from the Supreme Court rulings. You no, know, the constitutional. I have to put the constitutional format down first. Then I have to find where the Supreme Court rulings are in line with that. Then I have to find statutes and codes. That are in line with that, and when the law is put in order on all fours, then they can't they can't go against that affidavit because it's consistent with the law. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, it's a it's an order to it. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And that's how you, that's how you have to present the affidavit to that place in Washington, and and then they they can't dispute it. You know, in terms of law, they can't drag you in a tax court, which is a level three court. It's, a, it's, it's not even an official court because it does different type of courts. I was like, damn, this stuff is so damn yeah, yeah. complex. You heard so art, complex. talking about Article Three court, Article Three judge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so all this stuff was so complicated that was confusing me. That I, and the brother told me, "You ain't ready yet. Go back and read these books and stuff like that." And I said, like, "Oh my God, I got a mountain of stuff to do. And I got kind of work. I start getting tired. I'm six years old. I'm not." I don't ever do this stuff, so yeah, go ahead. I just had to fall. I just had to fall back, man, and just say, you know, let me start from the drawing board, you know, and uh, come at this another kind of way. So basically, I felt like I had to like purify myself more, you know, like find out any flaws inside myself, mm-hmm. expunge myself of my, you know, mental and spiritual flaws, you know, my prayers and everything like that, you know, and just kind of like be as perfect as I could be. You know, spiritually, right? Then, then come back at this stuff. You can't be, you can't be a, a, a sinner or something like that, and then going against fighting the devil. You know what I'm saying? Right. You, you, I think I understand what you're saying. Meaning that the cleaner you are, the more righteous you are, the more power that you get going up against the evil adversary. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You have more confidence when yeah. you go up against. That helped yeah, me when yeah. I was away because when I was away, I was more more focused in a lot of ways because I couldn't get access to certain stuff. You know what I mean? More yeah, focused. It's like, it's like a guy that's in jail, and I bring it from an Islamic perspective, you know, instead of just a colloquial perspective. I used to tell my nephew when he was in jail, I said, you may be right just now. You might say, well, I've been celibate for five years. I said, that's only because he was in jail. And I said... Can you be celibate when you're in the face of these women with titties and shit in front of your face on that stuff? You know what I mean? Right. right. Because if, if it's still in you to go out here and commit adultery and fornication, which is probably one of the major sins, and right, drinking and stuff like that, then that's still in you. It ain't, it ain't that because you locked up that made, that made you righteous. You was only righteous because you had to be. Right. It wasn't, you were righteous because you were. Right. You know, you didn't. 
you you wasn't ready to face evil and face on and resist it. Right, right. So so how can you expect God to help you in a situation where you need when you go into an adversarial uh, adversarial situation? Because the creation is going to is going to launch out against you because God basically is in command and God set these rules and guidelines that if you do this you'll be protected. If you fall outside of that, you're not going to be protected. And that's how you test them too. Nature will test you too to to, 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 to see who yeah. who is worthy of nobility, yeah. who is worthy of receiving the spiritual power. Yeah, everybody yeah. just can't get spiritual power. I, I no. when I when I got out this last time, when I got out from Moundsville, I, I told myself I'm gonna wait until I find somebody I really wanna that I really have energy with. So I waited like six months. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and I and look. I tell brothers they get out of prison. Yeah, they're like you waited six months. I said, yeah, I waited but six months before I found somebody. Right, the brothers look think I'm crazy. I ain't waiting no damn six yeah. months. You know what I'm saying? Yes, but, they say they just jump right into. They yeah. just jump right into something that's you know considered to be based upon based upon the Quran and the Sunnah. Some of these that's saying that's basically incorrect for their souls. You know what I'm saying? Right. Every time you do, every time you do a sin. It said that you get a black a black dot put on your heart, you know, and you keep doing these sins and then you black dots, black dots. They say in your whole, your heart, your whole heart is black in a metaphys in a metaphysical sense. Right. You know, okay. you may not be able to see it physically, but in metaphysical sense, your heart is black. You know, it's corrupt. I see you sex know? is like I see sex as being natural, like a natural thing. Men and women are supposed to do it, but. I also see it as a sacrament too, right? You know what I mean? Now I know them as, yeah, as, as a Muslim. You ain't, as a Muslim, if you ain't married, you ain't supposed to be having sex. But but whether you married not or not, with, not unless you. Not, well, it's, it's more to it than that. That's why you know I studied all this other kind of stuff because you know I try to look at everything. You know what I'm saying? I know I know my guidelines as far as religion is concerned, but then I got to look at everything that's going on around me in the society. Because a lot of the Muslim brothers don't know that this feminist stuff has has poisoned the minds of all these women out here, and that's why you can't get along with these marriages and their relationships. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why. You know? That's why. Now that's why I say that we need a. You see, my my idea. I've been reading and studying as well, right? I seen yeah. uh, your boy from back in the seventies. It was a brother that set up a a, a Yoruba village. Down in South Carolina, it's still down there today, where it was designed to be set up on the African village concept. Okay. Yeah. And it, it went off, and it went off pretty well. Yeah. But eventually, he he brought he, he he took on he was the king. He took on many wives. Okay. And he brought right. a white wife. And uh, and I was reading the book by him going to get a white wife. The black women didn't go for that, and it disrupted. The piece of the of the environment, you know what I'm saying? So, so it just uh, it just uh, they conspire with their nature to go against them, and yeah. they probably destroy the whole damn thing. See, women they challenge women. Women, 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 women can destroy nations. Not only can they destroy you as an individual, they have destroyed nations. They're the hidden hand behind a lot of this destruction that's going on out here. So you got to make sure she's right. You got to make sure she's on post and she's right. That's why I said we need to yeah. society yeah, devoted to yeah, her. Yeah, if you ain't if you ain't got your demeanor right to deal with the opposite sex, mm-hmm. then you shouldn't be bothered with them because they're just too powerful. Right. And, and you know can't what? and you can't and you can't deal with it. Teach. You can go on, you can go Teach. in there and try, but they're gonna destroy you. Teach. Yeah. You you really you gotta be child, You'll be paying child support for the rest of your life. Yeah. They'll destroy you financially. They'll have you living in a box, you know. They'll fuck the straight. Slander you, you and do all that stuff. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. No, shame, yeah. Lang- shame in language. You call y'all kind of filthy names, and you ain't you ain't this and you ain't that, and all this kind of stuff. You know, they, they have no total respect for you. And if you're not on your square it's, and confident about who you are, right, that stuff will impact you. That stuff will impact you and d- d- destroy you. Yeah. You're breaking up on me. I'm like, listen, listen. I found my men. Sometimes we get lost. We get lost in the woods, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, 
and then we find our compass and we come back home. You know, so I found myself and I'm, 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 I'm who I'm supposed to be now. Maybe then when you saw me then I was, you know, I was wavering because I didn't know who I was and know I was lost. And they'd be like, you're lost right now. But mm-hmm. you, you're dealing with the new me right now. I uh, you, you mentioned Marcus. I hadn't seen Marcus in a minute. I did get a chance to talk to him because you know he 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 got hemmed up and had that situation over in uh, Taylor County for a while. And I you know I, I was concerned about Marcus. But my last time I talked to Marcus, <laughs> yeah, Marcus told me he wasn't doing no women and he was real careful with women as a result of that situation that happened with him out in Taylor County. And I suspect that he was looking for a feminine woman too. That's why he was. But man, Taylor County is not the place to go, man. They got some hills have eyes out through that. I mean, when when I say some hills have eyes, they got some they got some wrong turn people out through that. Man, I don't know what he was doing over there. Man, I'm just so nuts. I don't know, man. And I, you know, sometimes you know you can talk to people. I can talk to people. They hear you talking, but they don't hear what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? More so now than ever. Because they be misguided. Yeah. Um, Allah says in the Quran, he told Allah to misguide and none to guide him. And he told Allah to guide and none to misguide. So Allah sees your heart and wants to guide you. Then you're a chosen one, you know. But if if he leads you astray, there's a reason for him leading you astray. You can talk to your brothers until they blew in their face. They're going to just be falling to the same old trap because they're not guided. I hear you talk a lot about your heart being clean, and I learned that stuff from studying the comedic, the Egyptian, the Egyptian stuff. There's certain things I find I have to do to, 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 to that can help me clean my heart. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes uh, I don't get into any arguments. I don't let nobody run up on me, and I don't run up on anybody. But periodically, once or twice a week, I'll go out in nature, in, in, in peacefulness of nature. Okay, I know that if you have a rambling mind, you got to find peace. Okay, yeah. So I'm asking you, what do you do? The things that you do to help cleanse you, to cleanse your heart, to help cleanse your heart and your mind. Uh, what works for you? Uh, shit, man, it's like uh. And we'll end on that, man. That's a, that's pretty heavy. That's a pretty heavy. I'm gonna. Let, <laughs> I see. I see you rubbing your head, man. But I, I, I got to get it from you a little bit older than what I am. I got to get it. And I can pass it on yeah. down to my to my youngins. Wow, that's uh. Well, you, well, you ain't got to answer it right now. You can take some time and, and let it marinate. You know what I'm saying? I think it's an important question. And that's what I'm here to do, to ask the important questions. Okay? Yeah, because uh, what I do might work for me, but it might not work for somebody else. Right. Understood. Understood. You know, uh, it should work for anybody else. I mean, if I told any other Muslim what I do, they would understand because they're trying to do, do the same thing. Maybe not to the same degree that I do, mm-hmm. but they may do it. You know what I mean? And, and this, uh, as a Muslim, as a, as a Muslim, uh, fasting, fasting and prayer, prayer is is a way of pre- preparation, discipline. And, pre- and and your yeah. heart does get a little during the fasting. I'm period. not I'm not I'm not I'm not good at fasting for some reason. I just ain't good at that. Mm-hmm. Some brothers do that. And everybody got their strong points and weak points. Fasting is not my strong point. You know. Uh, so I got brothers who get out, mad at me. Working on the pay. gym. Working on the gym. If the gym is open, that's my strong point. I'll try to okay. do it that way. But fasting is like something that you know. Uh, we have in Islam what's called, you got to be a Muslim, you're a believer, or you can be foremost, you know? I try to be foremost. Foremost is the highest level that you can achieve in a deen, you know? That's where Allah says, when you reach a level that you you do what he says and stay away, stay away, stay, stay away from, and you ain't got to be perfect. He said, he be, Allah becomes the hands which you strike. The eyes who with you see, their feet who with you walk. You understand? Know and the creation becomes a grudging servant to you. You know? Mm-hmm. And you can see it and feel it. It's like you walking in, you like you living in paradise on this earth, but you're not in paradise yet. 
and you can see the creation moving and the universe moving in your direction to help you out. And everything good and bad happened to you is all good. And that's how your world becomes, you know? Mm, that's interesting. So, do, do, yeah, do, so uh, do, 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 it's do. like you are, it's, it's, for lack of a better word, it's like you are God. It's like you it's like you God, but not God. Because God is with you, protecting you, watching you, protecting you with the creation, protecting you with the angels. Protecting you even with the people that's around you, you know, right? Because the people, the people can't go against you because they'll start fighting themselves before they start before they come after you, mm-hmm. you know, because they can't touch you, right? Right. Because you're like you're like in a protected state, like invincible, uh-huh. you know. But you have to you have to you have to earn that, right? You know, I don't just say my five daily prayers. I say the derogatory prayers. I say the prayers at night. I say the dickers to Allah. You know, constant state of awareness of Allah, constant, constant thanking Allah, constant asking Allah for forgiveness. It's constant, you know, like constant. And if you if you constantly in that state of God consciousness, this emanates a lot of triggers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That's when you get that type of that's when you get that type of protection. Mm-hmm. If you just want them little average Muslims that might go to the Juma on Friday and, and say your prayers on Friday, but you ain't doing else the rest of the week, but sitting all that kind of stuff, you're not going to achieve that level. Okay. I, 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 this has to be every day, 24 hours around the clock. I, I, you know what, That's how I achieve my peace. Yeah. That, I see where you at. I, I see where you at. I remember doing those kinds of things when I was away, staying in a certain mind state. I remember I had to deal with high blood pressure. I had to read these books to bring my blood pressure yeah. down. I didn't want to take medication. And I had to stay in yeah. a certain mindset uh, through breathing, through thinking. Otherwise, my blood pressure. I had to change my whole way of being. My blood pressure. You know, I was in prison, angry because I was in prison. And I didn't want to take medication. Yeah. And I, mean, I don't take medication now for high blood pressure, but I had to change the way I respond to certain situations or, or work on change now. So I see you. I see what you're talking about. Yeah, you can see the parallel to that. Yeah, yeah. It's a like a vibration or a frequency, a, a, whole, a yeah. whole mentality that comes up over you. Yeah. Yeah. You're at a higher, you're at a higher vibration, and um, it's like nothing. If if it's like uh, I can see the difference, you know. Like if I was going out there to do something, I had no damn business, you know, something like that. I probably could see, you know, somebody hit my car, put a dent in it, or something like that. You know, just some. You're going, you're going to expect some calamity to come your way. But if you live in your life correctly, these things don't be happening to you like that. Right, right. Go ahead, old bro. I like the way that's said. You see, that's what <laughs> for the same reason, like for the same reason, like I told you, I've been dealing with a, a new sister that come through over the last yeah. six months. I'd be concerned about her. I have to watch her. Like yesterday, a couple of days ago, she came down here telling me about how her daughter was having problems with the Mexicans up in the trailer court. And I'm thinking to myself, well, hell, I go up there through there all the time. I seen them. I don't have no problems with them. But why is her daughter having problems? She said the Mexicans came down through, almost hit her grandchild. And she was talking in the kind of way like she wanted me to run up there. You know what I mean? She was talking in the kind of way like she see, wanted, see, wanted me to run see, up there see, and prove myself. See, see, you might, you might, you might be cool within your space, but that doesn't mean everybody else is cool within theirs. Right. Right. And they're drawing, they're drawing in evil and calamities, and they're in on in and on them. I bet it. That's why. I, that's one of the things you know, I was concerned about, man. You got to watch they're drawing it. You in, they're, drawing, they're drawing you into their into their drama. Yeah, because I could, because I, I could have got drew into that when I seen her come with that energy. Right, I was like, what I do is I like zzz, 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 like a shield come up zzz, 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 over top yeah. of me to protect me from this energy, right? Yeah. And I sit back yeah. and examine her. Cause, Cause, I didn't get here by being. I ain't make it this far by being stupid. Okay, somebody stupid yeah. would try to yeah, run yeah. up there and prove themselves to her, and I'm in a whole bunch of drama unnecessarily. You know what I'm saying? I, I asked. I said, yes. first thing I say, do your daughter got a husband? She got a boyfriend or something? Because that's really supposed to be his job to do to take care of that first. You know what I'm saying? 
That's the yeah. way, you know. And really, if she got if her, if her daughter got a dude, that's supposed to be his job. Cause cause the Mexicans, they ain't gonna mess with you. They, look, they know that we their fathers. I don't have no problem, y'all. Well, it, it, it could. Well, how does the daughter look? Is the daughter nice looking? She's young and she's actually uh, I was, don't like to talk about nobody, but she's young and you can she's. Well, in, 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 in Islam, it says in a term is called tabaruj. In Islam, the word tabaruj broken down means naked while clothed. When you're naked while clothed. It's like you're walking in the jungle with meat all over your body, and there's a pack of lions in the bush. She kind of in the situation. Lions, what do you think the lions are going to do? They're going to ride that bush and tear your ass out the frame. She kind of in a situation like that. Because she, she's up That's there. That's what I'm saying. up there by herself. Yeah, yeah, Any woman in a situation with men, and she ain't got another man to look out for, she got to at least have a, the men in her family to show up to let other men know, back up, because we will tear your ass up. And I see her yeah, up there so, in the trailer court without a man. And the Mexican yeah. Mexicans like black women. They don't like us messing with their women, but they like black women. You, you know that, right? You know that? Well, you know, you know when black women are looked upon like they like they fights, you know. Right, because right. Because that's how they carry themselves, you know. Cardi B come with that little W A P song and all that kind of stuff. You know, they still just disgusting. You know what, she, bro? She, Go ahead on teach you, right? Because that's not <laughs> That's not, now is not the time to be going. I like a little bit of that too, but we can't, that's not what you promote. You don't promote no, that. No, a lady stallion or whatever like that. I mean, here uh, we are Megan facing, stallion. We're, yeah. facing, we're facing probably death itself yeah. because they try to inject us with this, you know, disease and all kinds of stuff. These crackers coming in, they going for, they going for the juggler vein on, on all, on all, on the whole world. We might not even live for this. Yeah. And you can and so you're trying to distract us with this WAP and all this debauchery and all this kind of it's stuff. Debauchery. It's time to be warriors. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. time to be it's time to be warriors. It's time to be serious. Yeah, time to be we serious. Can't, we can't be distracted. This is this is life and death right now. And he got no. Well, what I didn't really like is that Biden he went and interviewed Cardi B, and he didn't interview somebody with some. He didn't have an interview with somebody that had some intelligence. Now he did do an interview I seen recently with Ed. Um, the dude from BET, Ed Gordon, okay? But the interview with Ed Gordon didn't get as much play as the interview with Cardi B. Why would he take time out of his... What they, all, what they all do, Biden, Trump, all the presidents, they'll talk to our entertainers and to our clowns, you know, our professional clowns like, uh, you know, Steve Harvey or somebody like that, but they won't talk to Dr. Claude Anderson with the government. They won't talk to somebody who has a Marshall Plan. Right. They know they this, but they want to talk to the people they know don't know nothing. Right. And they just want to pat us on the head and keep treating us like we're not going to give you nothing. We're just going to pretend you are and you're going to fall for the okie doke because we set this we set this con game into play before we got you over here and you're just going to follow it globally because we done, we done tapped your subconscious mind and we are the ones that are sitting in your throne and you're not sitting on your own throne. So you're just going to follow our program because we're running you and you're not running yourself. Right, right. And that's basically what your subconscious mind is. The subconscious mind is your throne. You have to sit on your own throne and rule your existence. I hear you, brother. Sam. I hear you. Now, now I told you I do the meta Asar A sar in the meta in his book, in his teachings, a sar is the representative of God on earth. He's in a position to uh, uh, to give guidance to all the various faculties that you were, you know, yeah. the very various faculties based upon your birth, the season in which you were born, whether or not you've yeah. tapped into those attributes or not. I like this yeah. because I grew up, I like this meta natural this comedic thing because I grew up in the church when I was yeah. in Pennsylvania and they had a white Jesus up on the wall and, and with an all-black congregation. And I said, Something ain't right. So you worship these people directly and indirectly because what they say is lawful, you go for. What they say is unlawful, you go for. So indirectly, Satan is being crafty and clever and sitting on your throne, and that's why you're so weak. You know? And so we still got white you know, Jesus in our minds. We think Jesus is a, yeah. God is a white so, man, and whatever you yeah, have. So, so these people are indirectly sitting on your throne. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why nobody, that's why black people are on the bottom, they're never going to get back up because they got something else sitting on their throne. When you, when you study the power of the subconscious mind, all it's trying to show you is how to sit on your own throne. Your conscious mind sits on your throne, your subconscious mind, and you take your power back. And you make the universe and everything work for you. Hmm. I hear you, brother, man. That's some good talk right there. That's subconscious, man. Uh, yeah. I, I think I might be here partially because of the subconscious mind. Because I, I dream yeah, we, about we do it. We, we, we do it. We've done it our lives, but we don't realize how we've done it. Sometimes we do it by almost like a goof or by mistake. Mm-hmm. And we had, like, I went out to get me a car and said, I'm going to go out and get me a car today. You know, and I was in my mind that I'm going to definitely going to do this. And one time I went out to the to, to, uh, dealership. Now, there was a position right financially. And when I went out there, everything lined up. I left my other car there and took me out another car, mm-hmm. you know. And then when I went to Saudi Arabia, I was looking for a guy. I was looking for a guy. I was trying to find him because he was in the military with me. He was a Saudi Arabian. He taught me how to say my prayers. So... He gave me his number to get me in Saudi Arabia. So I went to when I went to the Hajj in 1983. I asked the brothers to try to help me find him, but they wouldn't help me find him. I thought they could speak Arabic and get on the phone and speak to the people in Arabic and understand because I could find the guy. Mm-hmm. So they, they wouldn't help me. So I was like a distress. I really wanted to see the guy. So when I went around the car for seven times, I stood in front. I, I prayed behind the station of Abraham, where Abraham's footprint is behind his glass. Mm-hmm. And when I turned around, out of 2.5 million people that was on high, when I turned around, he was standing right in front of me. Wow. That's that's how your subconscious mind works. Yeah. When you really want something and you tap into your subconscious mind, it's going to alter the universe and make it happen for you. That's what's up. I, I like that. I did that without even knowing it, you know, but I'm saying you can do this consciously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I okay. Any examples of that? That's the that, that's the route that black men need to be able to go, because we we are See, supposed that, to. That's, that's that's how we're going to be kings and have our own community, overthrow this government and every damn thing else. Mm-hmm. And they, you, they, you do that. If you don't do that first, nothing's going to happen. Right. They they use all this other stuff, television and all this other stuff, to distract yeah. us from from yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you don't if you don't sit on your throne. And, and cast these spells and all the kind of stuff off for you and back to the people trying to throw it on you. Using the power of your subconscious mind, they're going to keep using that magic to dethrone you. Yeah. You, you, you know, uh, go ahead on, brother. You know, Muslims ain't supposed to be, are Muslims supposed to be talking about magic? Well, the, 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 uh-huh. Were black Muslims known for their magic, for, for being magical people? I think they were had a mystical uh, magic. Magic was something that was taught by the two angels, Harut and Marut. Um, and the angels said, we just, we it as a test. Now, maybe we're supposed to learn this stuff in order to how to combat it off of ourselves. But other people use it to try to enslave other people. You know? Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things I've noticed to me you know, I try to tell the brothers, I think they, I think the Saudi Arabia might have tweaked our curriculum because our information is correct, but they might have tweaked the curriculum in certain areas where, so we wouldn't regain our power, you know. So one of the things in terms of getting the evil eye off of us, they tell us that we have to, somebody give us evil eye, you know, somebody get evil eye because it's a subtle thing. They say you got to take water, pour it on the person. They gave you the evil eye, gather that water and pour it over yourself and take that water and either dump it in the graveyard, a tree, a ground, a river, or something like that. Then I tried to tell one of the brothers, I said, I'll, I'll listen to a guy who does rukia as a profession. He said, you don't have to do it like that. He said, all you have to do is, you know, make yourself chronic water by chanting versus a chronic water. Pour that water on yourself gather it and you take it to a graveyard and dump it on any any grave because you don't know where somebody put magic on you and that's going to take away that feeling of lethargy and can't get up and do nothing or something like that you know throw it up on top of a tree throw it in the air on a tree because it's above your head and something trying to confuse you and, and confuse your mind you can get up off your mind like that you know mm-hmm. or in the river you know 
know, somebody might put in something you like in your money stream to keep money just keep flowing away from you. So you take that water from you and throw it in the river. So if you know, you take that money curse off. You, you know what I mean? No, that's like something factor. like some hoodoo stuff. Like you know, I mean, I mean, yeah. just a, I mean, I'm just saying, right? Some people from yeah, the deep but, south. Yeah, but, yeah, but you, it's easy to get off of you. But it's easier to get off of you than than what they was teaching us. You know what I'm saying? It's so original. that's what I'm saying. They might have tweaked the curriculum a little bit to try to hold us back. Mm-hmm. And a lot of brothers don't know that, but they're not going to challenge them and say, you know, you're not doing it right. You know? I know, I know, that the, I know that the whites do practice. I was in prison with them. I know that they do practice uh, some forms of occult. They, they're into the yeah. occult stuff, right? Like I was there with devil, devil worshippers. That yeah. you know what I'm saying. So I know that they do practice that. Or, you, know, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh. In the church, we were told to dismiss that. That's witchcraft. Dismiss that. You know. And we, see, most of us you know, in, in order to keep you ignorant, now you're gonna fight something. Without knowledge, yeah, of you, it. If, you, if you don't, if you don't know what you're dealing with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's you why. Know, I, that's, that's why I take time to study. You wear a certain like, you know, like certain crystals around your body, you know, to, to ward off, you know, uh, or around the radiation for one thing. But I know some people use it to ward off, you know, other things as well. 